If the idea of making training videos feels expensive, it feels daunting, it feels like there's going to be a huge learning curve, it feels like it's going to be time intensive, then you're in the right place. In this video, I want to show you the easiest and most budget friendly way to create good quality training videos that you can either sell to corporate clients, that you can use on any online programs you might create, or just that you can use to create YouTube videos if that's something that you want to do. You won't have to buy expensive equipment. You won't have to have Hollywood level editing skills. In fact, I think a pretty smart monkey could be taught how to use the method I'm going to show you today. Hi, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you're returning, nice to have you back. I'm Bev and I have been delivering corporate training for well over six years now and I've occasionally been asked to create simple head to camera training videos for clients. As well as that, I have an online membership program and I make video trainings for the membership. And I also create YouTube videos. And over the years, I have tried so many different methods and I have made so many different mistakes and I've invested so much money in equipment that I really didn't need. And in all honesty, I didn't even know how to use. But I'm all about keeping things nice and simple. And in this video, I want to share with you the setup that I'm using right now to film and edit head to camera videos, both for training and even for some of my YouTube videos. In fact, this video is being made using the exact same process that I'm going to teach you. Okay, so before we get into how to actually record, we're going to need some equipment. Now, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to break the bank. But there are a few pieces of equipment that I think you fundamentally need if you're going to get your videos looking of a quality that's acceptable to sell on. First of all, you need a camera. Now, for me, I've tried expensive DSLR cameras. I've tried fancy webcams that do all sorts of stuff. And I've come back to my trusty favorite, which is a high definition 1080p Logitech C922 Pro Stream webcam. That's a very long name. It's a very simple webcam, but it's good quality. And what I love about the Logitech is you get some software with it that means that you can adjust the framing and we'll talk about framing in a little while. Having an external webcam is so much better than the quality that you're likely to get built into your PC or your laptop. So investing in an external camera is money well spent. And I'm gonna show you a way to have your camera in front of the screen so you can easily read your notes without having to keep looking up and down. So hang around for that. That's going to be a little bit later. But any good quality HD webcam is going to improve the quality of the, the visuals. But you don't need to be setting up expensive cameras. You can pick up a decent HD webcam for around about 40 to 60 pounds and it will absolutely up level the quality of the visuals. The next most important factor is your audio and it's definitely worth investing in a decent microphone, an external microphone, not the one that's built into your computer or your laptop. And again, you don't have to break the bank. You can get some pretty decent USB microphones that literally just plug into your computer and you've got good quality audio straight away. Some of the common ones are things like the Blue Yeti, but you can pick up a, a good external microphone anywhere from maybe 50 up to 100 pounds. And if you're delivering training anyway, virtually, having a good quality webcam and a good quality camera is so important anyway. So it's money well invested. Now, I actually have a Shure SM7B and it's an XLR microphone, but you don't need something as expensive or complicated as this. They do a USB version which plugs straight into your computer. Mine goes into an audio interface, which is another piece of expense that you really don't need. 
All you need is a plug-in USB microphone. The next thing I would suggest you have is a small desktop tripod with a screw connector that you can put your webcam on top of. And the reason I do this is because I want my webcam not to be sitting on the top of the screen, but to be right in front of the screen. So I'm looking directly into the camera. Something like the Gorillapod flexible tripod is absolutely ideal. And that's gonna be probably between 10 and 20 pounds I would think. Lastly we want to think about lighting. Cheapest source of lighting is natural light from a window so if you're able to position your workstation in front of a large natural light source such as a window that will work absolutely fine. Just make sure if you do that that you have some sort of diffuser over the window. That could be a piece of foil, it could be a trans sort of semi-transparent blind. It could even just be a, a, a white shower curtain that you pin over the window. Just something that's going to diffuse the light so you don't have really harsh light coming down on you. And it also helps to manage any fluctuations if clouds go over or anything like that. So that is the easiest and the cheapest lighting. If you haven't got that available to you, having external lights is going to make a huge difference to the quality of the video. Now, again, you don't have to spend a fortune. You can just get a ring light that sits behind the screen. So your camera will effectively sort of sit in the middle of the ring light and that will give you good even light all across your face. Now, I don't particularly like a ring light because I wear glasses and it doesn't seem to matter how I position it. I end up with little white circles in my glasses, which doesn't look too great. So I have a Godox studio light with a dome diffuser attached to it, but that's quite an expensive option. The other option is to buy something like a panel light that gives you a nice even light on your your face. Now, if you've got some natural light coming in, you might only need one light. They call it a key light. This is the light that gives you the most light onto your face. And the closer the light source is to you and the bigger the light source, the softer the light is going to be. So if you don't want to go to the expense of buying a studio light with a big diffuser, that's absolutely fine. Find a good panel light and try and get it as close as you can to you. If you feel like you've got too much shadow on the other side of your face, you can buy a second one. It's called a fill light and it does exactly what it says on the tin. The key light gives you your main lighting to your face and the fill light just fills in those shadows. So depending on your personal choice, I quite like to have the, the key light coming down onto this side of my face and I have a fill light this way and if I just turn the lights off it'll give you an idea of the difference that lighting makes so first of all I'm going to turn off the fill light there we go you can see this side of my face is now a bit more shadowed and if I turn off the key light then you can see I'm quite a bit darker. Now it is daylight outside and I've got a window just to my left here but without the window it would be very dark. The other thing that I like about having the lights directly onto me it means that my background is a little bit less obvious so if I go back and put the key light on you can see it darkens the background. Can you see that? So the shelf in the background just goes out. Um, it's, it's not as noticeable. And I'm just going to put my fill light back on. Now you will notice that I've got a little light in the background. It's a, entirely up to you. I quite like that little bit of warmer light in the background. That's just a table lamp with a, an amber glow bulb in it. And it just gives a little bit of detail in the background, but you don't need that at all. So in terms of lighting, a key light, possibly a ring light or a key light and a fill light. And this is likely to be your biggest expense. So lighting is so important, but it is an investment. And again, if you're going to be delivering any kind of virtual training, it's probably worth investing in lighting. But as I say, if you aren't ready to invest, positioning your workstation in front of natural light will work absolutely fine. Okay, so now we've got your equipment sorted, let's talk about how to actually record 
your videos. Now, I like to use a software called Descript. Descript is a brilliant all-in-one recording tool and editing tool, and it uses some unique features like text-based editing, and I'll show you a little bit more about that once we've done the recording. I'm gonna take you over now to my screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so we're in Descript. I'm gonna do this as I would if I was recording for myself. That means if things go wrong, I'm not gonna edit them out. I'm gonna leave them in so that you can see when things go wrong because they do. You think something's gonna work a certain way and sometimes it doesn't. So rather than make this overly polished and taking out all of the potential challenges, I'm gonna leave them in and see how we go. Now, bear in mind, I'm recording my screen into a different piece of software so that you see everything. And it could be that that in itself causes a problem, but we'll see how we go. So when you enter Descript, you'll see that we've got this project dashboard. So obviously if you've never made any projects, you won't have anything in here. A project is just a video project. Um, we're just gonna hit new project up here in the right hand corner. We want a video project. And it opens up this window here. So what we're going to do is hit record. And it opens up this window that gives you the option to record your camera, as you can see here, or your screen. So if you wanted to share slides, you could record your screen as well. We're not going to do that in this video. We're going to keep it nice and simple and just do a faced camera uh, video. So I've got my video here. I'm just going to move me down into the corner here. So you can see what's happening. Um, and we can record straight into script. And when we record into script, it gives us a transcription of what we're saying as we record. So I'm just going to hit record into script. It's giving us a countdown. And now you can see down here that we are recording. There we go, showing you I was a bit small there. If I leave it there, we can see. So we can give this a title now if we want to, or we can just continue with our recording. So what I mentioned earlier that I like to have my webcam in front of my screen, this is the reason. So I can look straight at my webcam, but if I just open up my notes, uh, so these are the notes that I've made already for this video. So it would be whatever notes you were going to use. Now it could be a, a full script, or it could just be bullet points to give you reminders. I tend to have a bit of a script mainly for my introduction and then I kind of have bullet points for the, the main part of the video. Do whatever feels right for you. Now you could use a teleprompter for this but that would be an additional expense and they're not particularly cheap. Also talking naturally into a teleprompter is a real skill. And if you don't get it right, it can look really weird. So I would, I prefer to do it this way. I do have a teleprompter. I have used it in the past, but to be honest, I like to keep it simple. And this way there's much less setup. So all I would be doing is I would have my script just above my eye line. So literally just above the camera and Editing in Descript is incredibly easy. It's text-based editing. So when it gives you the transcript, if there's something you don't want or there's gaps, you can just very easily take them out. So we're not going to worry about leaving gaps in what we're saying. It will all come together in the edit. So how I would do this, I've got my notes right behind me and I would just have a quick look at what I want to say and then I'd say it. So for example, if the idea of making training videos feels daunting, fear inducing, challenging, then you're in the right place. Now, I didn't get it quite right. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just gonna read the next bit. I want to show you the easiest, most budget friendly way to create head to camera videos without having to buy expensive equipment or gaining Hollywood level editing skills. And if I mess up, it really isn't a problem because I can edit it out in Descript 
in the editing process when I finished recording. So if I make a mistake, I don't stop and start again with the whole recording. I'll just take a pause, regroup and start again. And I just use my mouse to scroll the text up. So it's, it's always just slightly higher than eye level and just behind the camera lens on the webcam. This is why I have the webcam on a tripod in front of the screen and not hooked over the top of the screen, which is what we would normally expect to do because then my eyes would be looking in completely the wrong place. So again, just working through the script, reading a bit, repeating it, keeping going until I get it right. And if I leave a gap after each mistake, it's very easy in the editing then to just go through and cut those bits out. And I'll just continue doing that all the way through. So if I just go back to Descript and if I just stop the recording and there you go, it's pulled up my script, my transcript. We can see the video here. And if I just play through it and now you can see down here that we are recording. There we go, showing you I was a bit small there. So if I leave it there, we can see. Okay, so if there's bits in here that I don't want, so where was I when I, that doesn't make sense there, then you're in the right place. Now I ain't get it quite right. That's obviously not what I said. It doesn't always pick up exactly the transcript, but it gives you a good idea. So if there was a bit there that I didn't really want, I can just highlight it with my mouse, hit the delete key, and now it's gone. So if I just play this bit, I want to show you the easiest, most budget friendly way to create head to camera videos. Okay, so it's a bit pausey, isn't it? There's, there's a lot of pauses in there. So if we come up here to Underlord, Underlord is Descript's magic AI, and we come down here and we shorten word gaps, if I just click on that, it shows you all of the, the gaps and I can come up here and say, well, how long do I want them to be? So I'm going to put one second, anything that's one second or more long, I'm going to ask it to shorten it. So if I just click here, you can see, you can see where the gaps are because it's those dotted lines. So if I shorten all and now if I just go back up here and play editing skills, Oops. let's go back to where I wanted to be up here. I want to show you the easiest, most budget friendly way to create head to camera videos. So we might still want to take a little bit out. So if I just take this gap out, I'll replay it again. You can see all I've I done want there to is show you the easiest, most budget friendly way to create head to camera videos. And it's that easy. So we've taken out the gaps that we don't want. If we come back up here to Underlord, we can actually remove any filler words. So if you've got ums and ers and things in there that you don't want, if we click on remove filler words, you can see there are a few, not many, because I was pretty much reading from my script. So it's not like when you're talking normally and you have to have those little sort of brain moments when you have to think about what you're going to say and you put an um or an er in. But here we go. We've got just close that actually and open this so remove filler words it's showing you I've got four here and I'm just going to remove them all and it's highlighted them in yellow here so you can see where they are I'm just going to remove them all because I don't want them and it's as simple as that they're gone now you can you're obviously going to want to read through your transcript and make sure you've taken out everything that you don't want in there um, if you're going to use the transcript, you can actually download the, tr the transcript as a Word document. If you're going to do that, obviously you want to make sure that the words are all correct. So for example, maybe here, if, we, if I said we can just continue with our recording, perhaps what I actually says, we can just contribute to the recording and it picked it up wrong. I didn't say that. I wouldn't say that, but it gives you an idea. If I just highlight this word... I can correct it, click correct and change continue to contribute, correct and then it just changes it. It doesn't change what I say in the video, I still say whatever word was in there, um, which is 
the correct word it should be. Um, but if, if it hasn't listened to my transcription, if it hasn't transcribed it accurately, I can just change that. And if I realize that I've got that wrong, I can just hit Control Z and it'll take it back. Control Z is pretty universal as an undo button. One last thing I want to show you is if you want to create trading videos that are accessible, then you can add auto captions and Descript does a pretty good job of this. You want to do this after you've double checked that your transcription is accurate. And then we come over here on the right hand side to captions. If we just click that, we get a, a choice of different styles. So I'm just going to keep this uh, caption here with it's italics and it, it kind of moves through word by word by changing the word to green. So if I just click on that, it's just analyzing the text and in pretty much no time at all, you can see that the captions have been added. So if I go back up here and I click play that we are recording, there we go, showing you I was a bit small there. So and it's as there, easy as see. that. So we can add. give this a title now if we want to, or we can just Sorry, it's as easy as that to add auto captions. So once we're done and we've got everything we need, we can publish or export. So we're just going to go up here to the publish button. We have two options. We can either export it as an MP4. This is quite slow though. It'll export it as an MP4 onto your computer. An easier way to do is to publish it. Uh, I should have probably set this up earlier because it's in a very low resolution at the minute and I should have done it in 10, 1080p when I started the recording. Just as a point of note, you will want to get the highest quality possible. Uh, so if we look at how to publish, if we come to here, for web, uh, we can have it as a web link, which is ideal. It'll take no time at all to create the web link and then you can download it later at your leisure and it's, it downloads more quickly than it does when it exports. Or if you're wanting to upload something to YouTube, for example, you can uh, you can publish it straight to YouTube or to your Google Drive, etc. So I'm just going to publish it as a web link. It'll just take a few seconds. There it is, published. And I can either download it to my computer here or I can just copy the link. And this is great. So if you are sending the MP4 to a client, you can just send them the link and they can download it their end. So I'm just going to copy that link. And if I just open Google or just open a browser rather and uh, paste that link. And there we have our video. And now you can see down here that we are recording. There we go. Now, one of the other things I love about using the Logitech webcam is that it comes with a bit of software that enables you to frame up your video. And it means that we can position ourselves. Now, ideally in terms of framing, you want to imagine your screen divided into nine squares. They call this the rule of thirds. So you have two vertical and two horizontal squares on your screen. And you really want your eye line to be around about the, the level of the, the top horizontal line. And you want your body in the middle between the two vertical lines. So you're nicely centered. With the webcam software, we can actually position ourselves where we need to be. So if I click, you can see that little wheel moves me to the side. So if I was a little bit off center, rather than having to move my seat, I can potentially just move myself into the best position. That looks about right. And again, there's quite a big of gap above my head there. So I'm just going to, oops, wrong way. Okay, that's as far as it will go. So I'm probably a little bit low here looking at the, the screen at the moment, but that just gives you an idea that you can actually use the software to frame yourself. Also with the webcam, you've got these settings so I can adjust the brightness. I can adjust the con contrast. Ooh, that's a bit weird. Very orange. Let me just get myself back to where I'm about. There we go. And I can change the color intensity as well. If I want to look very orange, I look like a oompa lumper. So there you go. I hope that's given you some tips and ideas for actually creating training videos simply quickly and without a whole load of expense. And if you want to learn how to facilitate your training like an absolute pro, watch this video next.